Y'all, I am in the basement of my new house. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I'm a part-time reseller and this has been a crazy couple of weeks, especially for someone who is working full-time as a high school choir teacher who is reselling part-time and someone who just move. Now we did not move far. We moved literally like five minutes down the street into a different neighborhood. There were two main reasons. One is this house has a basement of which I'm going to give you a tour of here in a second. Um, and then also this house has a really nice in-law suite because my mother-in-law comes and stays for long stretches of time. My parents come and stay for long stretches of time. And we just wanted a space where they were going to be more comfortable and also just have a space where, you know, they could stay long term if that's something that they want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a tour of the basement really quickly and show you the before because there is um, a space down here that is going to be dedicated to my reselling business and it is a blank slate right now so I'm going to show that to you and then together we're going to furnish it we're going to move all of my reselling stuff in there and I'm going to take you along for the process so you can kind of see um, just my thought process as I start putting that room together but before we go on our tour let's talk about the last couple of months really quick <laughs> I wanted to take a quick moment to thank Level 8, a really wonderful company that makes amazing suitcases and just general travel gear, because they reached out to ask if I would be interested in trying out one of their suitcases. Um, it was perfect timing because we actually really needed a suitcase as we were preparing for our trip to both the Disney Cruise and this trip to Cancun. And so they sent me this Condor backpack and textured luggage set. It was perfect because my husband desperately needed a new travel backpack. The backpack he had been using prior was falling apart and we needed another suitcase because my sister-in-law <laughs> kept borrowing one of ours whenever they went on a trip and we were actually going to Cancun with them so we just decided to get another suitcase and this was perfect. We were especially looking for something that my kids could also use and this absolutely fit the bill because it was extremely lightweight and it had those really quiet 360 degree spinner wheels. As a result this suitcase was extremely easy for my kids to maneuver through the airport, through the hotel, but the bag also just had enough space to hold everything that they needed to pack so it just fired on all cylinders. The last thing that I'll share is I loved how the backpack actually would hook onto the suitcase so nicely so it was really like a two-in-one package deal versus having to maneuver both pieces separately you could really just kind of slide the handles of the backpack onto the handle of the suitcase and it made it really easy to travel with. If you are in need of any new luggage for any upcoming trips you may have, you can use my code BECKY10 to save 10% on your first purchase on the Level 8 website. You can find both the link and the coupon code down in the description below. Thank you once again, Level 8. So after just some amazing family time, some amazing traveling, we did have to buckle down and get our butts in gear because we were moving. I spent so much money on boxes at places like Lowe's and Home Depot before I realized that maybe I could find boxes for cheap by reaching out to local businesses that use lots of boxes. We tried calling a lot of different places and the winner ended up being Costco. Costco told me to come a little bit before they opened their doors to the general public and they let me know that they would have their bakery save some boxes for me and every day the bakery had anywhere from 25 to 50 boxes. There were also other boxes that you could find at the front of the store. Usually they cut the tops off of most of them, but sometimes I'd be able to find boxes there as well. Look at my haul of free boxes. I went to Costco at least three or four days and got over 100 boxes from them for free. In terms of unlisted inventory, I went through everything that I had and separated out the things that I knew I wanted to take to my new house to resell, but also a pile of things that I just wanted to consign locally at a local kids consignment store. I also put aside a pile of stuff that I wanted to donate, and that way I was able to move into my new house with less inventory to list, 
and really just the kind of inventory that would make me good money. The new house that we moved into does have more square footage than our old house, which means that there is more space to furnish. So I have also been spending a lot of time at local antique stores and at local thrift stores, at places like this. This is called Paca. I don't remember exactly what it stands for. I'll pop something in here, but essentially it is a lot of stuff from homes that are being renovated or torn apart. They want to save a lot of the architecture. They want to save a lot of just historical pieces with value um, and so they'll bring them to this place and this place will sell these items for extremely cheap to the general public. I personally didn't find anything here today but it is always really cool to look and see what kind of stuff they have and it's especially great if you are completely renovating a home and if you want some of that historical charm, Paca is a really great place to go. This is an example of a local consignment store that I went to and did purchase a lot of kind of smaller filler pieces for my home things that go on my built-in bookshelves and things of that nature. Here's another local store that's very interesting because they do a lot of secondhand furniture but also brand new kind of boutique clothing. There definitely is a very specific vibe in this store and I hadn't visited it in many many years despite the fact that it's less than five minutes away from the school that I work at but I decided I should check it out as you know like I said we were trying to find pieces for our home and I definitely found some wonderful pieces. I fell in love with this store and just its unique vibe and the amazing pieces that they picked up. This pair of mid-century modern lamps, they were something that I desperately wanted to purchase but they were definitely on the more expensive side and ultimately my husband and I decided that we probably didn't need them. They were a want, not a necessity and at this time we really have to focus on the necessities for our home like this chair that you're going to see in a second. This golden chair I did end up purchasing because it was perfect for this little nook in our house where the kids could read but I could also film some haul videos. I've also been hitting up a lot of estate sales and garage sales in an effort to pick up some furniture pieces for cheap and oh my goodness this mid-century modern home was filled with a lot of mid-century modern goodness as you're about to see. I did get a handful of pieces here. The pricing to be honest at this particular estate sale was pretty high but I was able to walk away with a few goodies that I'll show you right here. I also just could not get over this backyard. The yard wasn't necessarily that big, but they had this really cool pool. And as I just kind of stood in the backyard and looked around, I couldn't help but wonder what kind of epic pool parties this family had in their backyard. These are the small items that I picked up from this garage sale. The books, the vase, the little pottery, the little candlestick holder. Those are things that are just going in my home. And the other two pieces are for resale. As I said earlier, I will have a separate video coming out in the future. I can't even say near future because I don't know if it's in the near future, but a video regarding my finalized, complete reselling space. I don't know when that's gonna happen yet because one thing I'm learning is that good things take time. If I wanted to, I could go on Wayfair.com and just buy everything that I need to furnish the space and make it functional. But what I'm learning is I do want character. I do want to have a space that really speaks to me and fills me with joy. And that's not gonna happen by putting something together really quickly. And I wanna make sure that things are done correctly. So the very first thing we did when we moved into the home was do a deep clean of the spaces that we knew we'd be using often, including that unfinished part of the basement, which would become my reselling space. You're gonna hear more about it later when I I do a tour of that unfinished space but it was disgusting it was unsanitary there was a lot of work that needed to be done there so while I was waiting for that space to get cleaned up I set up a makeshift shipping area in kind of like the I don't know I'll call it the lobby area of the basement this is like that little area right when you come down the stairs I just set up my standing desk here with the 
you know, basic essentials of what I would need to at least get my shipping done. And as you'll see again later too, I have all of my stuff in a guest bedroom that's downstairs, all of my inventory, all of my shipping supplies, just everything that was in my reselling space in my last house was now in that guest bedroom. But the biggest lesson I have been learning as I've been putting together this brand new space is that it's okay to take your time and sometimes in doing so, you learn what you actually need from your space. I promise you that if I had just moved full speed ahead with the original vision that I had for that space, it would not be nearly as functional as what it will be now, now that I know what I need as I'm working in that space. Now, as you can see, operating in a less than functional space like I am at this moment is not very fun. I am currently in the guest bedroom with all of my reselling stuff. Everything is in boxes and it's hard. It's hard finding things, locating things when you need them and climbing over boxes, trying not to hurt yourself, but inevitably stubbing your toe on something. It is really difficult. And as I'm slowly moving everything from this room into the reselling space to its permanent home, I am very happy to see this room starting to get cleared out, but you can see just how difficult it is to take your time in setting up new spaces. However, I wouldn't trade that for the world because as I'm moving things slowly, I'm finding that I'm moving things around or I'm changing my mind because I'm figuring out that, you know, putting this particular item in this spot in the room is going to be more beneficial and ultimately more productive for me than where I had originally thought I was going to place it. So by giving myself that space and time to make those decisions as they arrived really helped me create a more functional space. All right, so here's the official tour. I'm at the top of the stairs of the basement. I'm going to make my way down. And right now, right away, what you see is kind of my temporary workstation that I had. We moved in literally, let's see, maybe four or five days ago. And I'm going to show you where all of my reselling stuff is right now. And I'm also going to explain why I had to set up this temporary station versus just putting all of my reselling stuff in the space that I'm going to have it be forever um, why I couldn't put it there yet so this is my standing desk I really like it because you can you know adjust how high and how low it goes and I will have all products that I talk about in this video linked down below but these are literally my essentials in this little three drawer um, bin there are all of my e eBay poly mailers I have other poly mailers for like Mercari I've got my thank you cards I've got my scale, my Dymo label printer, um, all of the essentials. Right here is just a closet that is gonna be for like my kids and their games and stuff like that. Um, it's a pretty nice size closet though. Let's see if I can open it up. So you can see there's like just a bunch of games in there right now. The goal is to not infiltrate into that space. So another really nice thing about this house is this pretty large laundry room. Um, actually right before we moved in, the washing machine broke and so they had to get a new one for us or they had to like give us credit so that we could get a new washing machine. So that is brand new. Um, and there's a nice sink here, which is great if I have to get stains out of things. There's a lot of like cabinet space and whatnot. And then there's just a lot of space. Um, as you can see, there's like a place to hang stuff there. Um, there's this little wall here. And then there's a closet in here that I can also store stuff if necessary. I don't really feel like we need all of this space just for us as a family. And so I do feel like I can keep some reselling stuff, you know, maybe things that need to get dry cleaned or just things that I need tucked away. They can go in these spaces. So let's keep moving. And before I take you to the space that I'm gonna be using for my reselling business. I'm gonna show you where everything is right now. Also, there is a full bath down here with a bathtub, which is really nice in case I'm working and I need to go to the bathroom. And this is like the regular basement area. It's finished. This is where my kids play, where all their toys are, which is really nice because it's right next to my reselling space and we can be near one another as I'm working and they're playing. Okay, so 
this jungle right here. Let me turn some lights on. So this crazy space right here is where all of my reselling stuff is living right now. This is a spare bedroom in the basement. The goal is to not really have very many people down here, but sometimes my parents and my mother-in-law like to come visit us at the same time. So this will be good to have, you know, someone down here while someone's in the in-law suite on the main floor. Um, so we are going to furnish this with like a bed and, you know, nightstands and all of that kind of stuff. But for now it is my temporary workstation or just temporary holding place for all of my reselling stuff. But now let me show you where I'm going to be doing all of my reselling. So we're going to turn this way. And if you go in through this door, ta-da! Okay, so this is an unfinished part of the basement. It is pretty massive. Um, it's just concrete floors, and these are concrete blocks on the walls. And we actually got um, the floors professionally clean because right along this wall right here there was a ton of mouse poop and even a dead mouse it was quite traumatizing so we had someone come in and clean the floors professionally we even had them clean these walls here just because um you know it, it was it's probably one of those things that haven't been cleaned in forever so essentially it's kind of like a power wash that they do but if you look over this way that right there is the crawl space and then this is um just like some wooden beams and on the other side of them are things like the furnace this is like where they kept all the paint and stuff the dehumidifier um this is that thing i don't know the water thing so i'm going to explain to you kind of how i want to do this as far as how i want to set this room up also this random shelf right here they had left it behind and they left behind all these electronics so there are things like dvd and vcr combos there's a dvd player here um there's just lots of like tv mounts i think there's like maybe some more up there so i do have to clean this out obviously like a lot of the stuff i'm just going to maybe try and sell because i bet it's sellable but my plan is to clean this up and along this wall right here where these beams are and also along this wall where these beams are i want to put my shelves with all of my bins because I don't want to look at this stuff. And then the goal is to have this corner set up nicely and like designed really well so that that can be my filming space. That's going to be kind of like my YouTube area right there. I think over here on this wall next to where my filming area is going to be is where I will set up um, perhaps my photography area. And then this area right here, I think will be shipping. There's like a wooden board that covers that. So I'm still trying to figure it out a little bit, but yeah, either shipping here or photography here, and this will be, you know, the other. So the nice thing about this room because of the size and stuff too, is I can have like rolling racks and stuff kind of in the middle, um, just with inventory that's kind of waiting to be sorted. Um, and also I think I can finally like really take consignment seriously because I'll have the space to do it. So I'm going to start setting up. I'm going to, like I said, take you along for the ride and we're going to see if I can transform this space. We are starting by changing the bulbs because my husband is very particular about lighting. But I have also learned to be particular of lighting. Whoa! I almost fell. Okay, can you explain what kind of lights we're putting in? Daylight. Why? Because it's whiter and more natural. Yes, because you hate the yellow light. That's right. <laughs> so we're starting with that. People often ask me about the shelves that I use for my inventory. I purchased them at Home Depot and we actually first got a set to use for our kids toys for the playroom area and because they work so well I decided to use them for my inventory as well. My sister-in-law had purchased them first and she told me that she was able to put them together by herself. I didn't really believe her and when I put them together for the first time at our old house I had my husband help me. However, now that I knew how these were put together and I had just taken them apart to bring them to the new place, I realized that it was pretty easy to assemble and so I did manage to put them together basically by myself. I will have them linked down 
down in the description below. I am by no means an affiliate for this company or brand or anything like that. They have no idea who I am, but I do have a lot of these shelving units and I have found them to be great and very sturdy over the years. All right, let me show you what we've done so far tonight. I'm so tired, but this area I decided to just kind of close off and make it a shipping area. So you can see I've got my screening table there. That's where I'm gonna do my shipping. And I figured this was a good place to put um, my seating desk instead of these shelves because this is where, what is this called? Like the breakers, you know, whatever these things are. They control a lot of the um, stuff in our house. And so I couldn't cover those with these shelves. And so I am gonna just have to look into this ugly space back here. Um, my husband was saying maybe I can put like sheets or something i don't know we can do something especially on the other side so that i don't have to look into this space and hear like the dripping water and all that stuff but here is where i'm going to ship at my standing desk and then i've got these silver shelves on either side this is where i'm going to put all of my shipping supplies um and then when i go to ship i just have to turn around and pull all of my shipping i'm gonna have to get a better ladder than this guy um and I still have to build out another shelf, but at least I got these two built and we got some bins put in place. So that feels really good. And then over here is where I'm gonna have my filming area. I had a rug down here that we had used in our kitchen before we moved in our old house. However, that was kind of a similar color to the floor so it just didn't really work so now i know i need something like a bold pop of color to stand against the concrete um so that's what's going to happen over here and i'm going to have kind of like a two-tiered filming area so right here against the wall is where i'll have like a rug and i'll have like a chair and maybe like a table or something and this will be a spot where i can do hauls and stuff like that and then this table I'm going to set up kind of here in the middle of the room so that I can also film stuff on the table from a little bit further back. You'll see that set up back there as well, which is fine. But at the table, I'll film things like, um, you know, my what's old videos and stuff. So I'm still trying to figure out what happens against this wall. This might be where all of the unlisted stuff goes. Um, the difficulty my husband and I ran into was that there aren't very many outlets. There's this one here against this wall, and then there's two against this wall, one right there and one under the standing desk. Unfortunately, there is none over here. So I was kind of sad because I was like, I don't know how I'm going to, you know, get this area well lit and stuff. However, my husband said that they do sell power strips. They sell like super long ones. So I think we're going to try to get one that will kind of snake all the way down here so that we can get um, some lamps and stuff. I think that's what's gonna happen. I will definitely do a tour of the entire space when I have it ready. Um, it's coming together, like this actually looks kind of legit. Um, I also have a nice air purifier here just to kind of, you know, have the best air that I can. These shelves, I think my husband said they're from Target, so I will check and let you know, but I will have them linked down below as well, as well as my senior desk. So that's what we got going on. But now I need to sleep. I'm so, 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 so tired and sore. So I'll see you guys when I get a little bit more done in here. Today was actually a pretty good sales day, but I think more importantly, we need to address what's happening here. Okay, so first of all, I I have my leftover uh, Easter hair. I feel like it looks okay. I am fully in my PJs and I've got these crazy, like ugly Crocs on. These are the Crocs that I wear when I am down in the basement. Um, but this is the first time you're going to see me ship and use what I have set up of this shipping space thus far. There's still a lot to go. And so we're just going to try this style of video. Sorry, I am like trying to hold on to the charger and there's a lot going on here. But we're going to go ahead and get started. So let's see. We are going to pull a pair of Zara pants. They are in box 758, which as you can see, I don't have in here yet. That is in the other room where all of my other reselling stuff is. 
and before we go in there looking for those yeah that's it so that's the only thing in the other room let's go get them right now so i think i showed this in the tour but right now all of my stuff is being held in this spare bedroom down in the basement and i have all of my reselling boxes here against the wall so i'm going to go ahead and grab 758 it is in this bin right here it's this pair of zara lyosol and maybe like linen blend pants here they are right on top i believe i got these at a consignment store there was a part of me that was thinking about um, keeping them for myself but ultimately i ended up listing them they didn't sell for maybe quite as much as i would have liked but that's all right so um the system that i'm kind of trying to develop is i have a little bag here Actually, it's not a little bag it's a big bag but as i pull stuff i'm going to go ahead and throw it in there and then i'll have all of my inventory in that bag so the next item we're going to pull is this talbot's black maxi dress that is in 678 which is all the way up here on the top shelf so let me set you down and you can watch me try to get that down Getting the things on the top shelf are not very fun, <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. Okay, next up, we are pulling a shirt by the brand Lisi, and it is in, it is SKU number 214. The really funny thing about this brand is that I don't have a lot of stuff by this brand, and I've had this piece and this pair of shorts listed in you know all of my reselling platforms for a while now and they both randomly sold today like what are the odds okay i gotta sit you down a few moments later All right, so I think we pulled everything. I sold five items, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and ship those items out and explain to you how I would ship them out. All right, so I've got my bag of pulled inventory. I'm also gonna pull a bag to put all of these items in once they're packaged up, so let me go get that bag. All right, so I've got an Ikea bag. I feel like that's pretty typical for most resellers. I'm just gonna go ahead and reach in and grab an item. So the first thing to sell was this pair of like Lyocell pants from Zara and let's see how much they sold for. They sold for $22, which left me with a profit of $17.60. Now that doesn't include how much I had in these as my cost of goods. Um, I thought they were really cute. They've got like a elastic waist and a nice drawstring as well as, you know, zipper pockets. I liked them, but you know, I did sit on them for probably a good few months. I also have a, little box down here that I put all these bags in because as you guys know I like to reuse my skew bags and help save the environment one ziplock bag at a time so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this in one of these I don't know what it is I always forget what these are called when I'm on camera what is this bag called oh my gosh I can't remember but um, I'm gonna put it in here just so it's you know nice and safe for its journey to its next owner and then because this is a Poshmark sale I'm gonna go ahead and put it in one of those like pre-made flat rate boxes I'll show you what I mean here in a second I do also have a little garbage can underneath the table which is great so that guy might be able to go in the small flat rate box we're gonna see I think so and then I have my thank you cards right here. I'm just gonna write, Dear Kara, thank you. All right, that's gonna go on top. I'm gonna get this packaged up. I already have this label printed because my 
Poshmark ones I'm able to pre-print pretty easily. It's the eBay ones that you have to like put in the actual weight, pick out your shipping carrier, you have to do all that stuff, and then those labels will print. But that fit in there beautifully, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my label from my Dymo label printer and slap this on without you seeing so you cannot I don't know what you would even do if you saw this person's address like would you go stalk her and be like oh I saw you bought those gray pants from Becky like that's weird so okay next up is this really summery springy dress like I'm shocked because it's the day after Easter why didn't this sell in time for Easter I don't know but this is Banana Republic it is new with tags I believe I got it from a reseller who didn't want to hold on to all of this inventory and so she sent me like a palette of clothing and this was included in that palette. So that means I had about $3.92 into these. This ended up selling for my full asking price of $29.99 and that's even after I had it on sale over the weekend, over like the Easter weekend. I had it on like a 20% off sale and then literally the day after Easter it sold for my full asking price. So there you go. I mean, you just can't assume that things are going to sell at a certain time for a certain price. eBay always surprises me. And this item is going out to Georgia. So I don't think shipping will be that bad. It's definitely under a pound. So what we're going to do is we're going to weigh it. We're going to see how much it weighs and that will determine how much we're gonna pay for shipping. So that is 9.4 ounces. I'm gonna call it 10. I already have it in there as such because I do pre-weigh my items before I um, list them. That way I have an idea of how much I should charge the buyer for shipping because I do charge the buyer for shipping on everything. I do have these eBay poly mailers that I get using my, uh, what is it like? store credit if you have an ebay store they give you a coupon towards shipping supplies so that's what i use this is going out to lawrence all right so that goes in the bag and then we're gonna put in the fact that it is 10 pounds and the shipping comes up to four dollars and 81 cents on ebay for that so that's not going to go in the ikea bag yet but i'm going to write lawrence's name on here so i don't have a mix up like i do sometimes and then when all the labels print at once i will know which label is supposed to go on there all right so like i said earlier i don't sell this brand very often i don't pick it up that often it's okay um i've sold it before it's not like an exciting brand i think it's a brand that like more mature women like um they do a lot of kind of just basic like casual pieces sorry i had like a piece of hair in my mouth um you know like so this shirt for example it's pretty basic in that it's just like a t-shirt essentially it's got a nice rounded hem but it's got like an interesting design to it with the black and white kind of wavy stripes this might be made of something decent i don't know and i'm calling this new without tags because it has like all of this stuff on it and it very clearly has not been worn you can feel it um, i believe i picked this up at a local consignment store during their birthday sale this is made of 95 percent linen and five percent spandex which is great so that's another really great quality about it is the fact that it is so much linen linen is a great material um, linen pieces sell really well in the spring and summertime because it's so breathable and lightweight so i'm not surprised that this sold and i would not have picked it up if it were just like cotton it's just too basic but i took a chance on it because of the fact that it was linen and this ended up selling for $24.90, which is an offer that I sent out to someone. I think I probably had it listed for either 30 or 35. Um, and then the funny thing is, I don't have a lot of Lisi, Lissy, I don't know how to say it. I don't have a lot of this brand in my closet, but two items by this brand sold today, which again is just so bizarre that, you know, that would happen, but that's just how it goes sometimes. eBay is super weird and random. Um, and that's one of the things I love about it. It's also strange that I had five sales today and four of them were on eBay and one was Poshmark. Usually it would be the other way around, but that's why I like to 
you know, be on multiple platforms. I almost grabbed a flat rate box and that would have been like the worst thing to do for eBay because that would be so expensive. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a smaller eBay poly mailer that I purchased with my shipping coupon, my store coupon. I'm gonna write my little card. This is going out to Lail. I've never heard of that name, Lail. So like Yale, but with an L. It's kind of pretty though, I like it. Okay, so once we get this packaged up, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh it. Although I did pre-weigh this as well. Get all the air out. Okay, so that's gonna cost $4.20 to ship out to New Orleans, Louisiana. All right, next up is the other Lisi piece. This is a pair of like, I'm just gonna show you. They're basically like jeggings, but they're shorts and they're cuffed. And this person really wanted them, but not for the price that I had them listed for. But honestly, I was like, you right. Like these just need to leave my home. So I think I had them listed for like $40 or like $45. These are new with tags too, by the way. And this person kept offering me 20 and I kept countering at 25. Like that was the lowest that I wanted to go. And then the offer kept expiring. But finally she came back again with like a $20 offer. I came back again with my $24.90 counter. And then she came up to $22.50. And I was like, you know what? We're gonna count that as a win. Like We're just gonna say that's a win. She came up a little bit. I just need to move this because it's a little ridiculous in the first place. I got it at a local consignment store during their birthday sale. So I had $2.52 into it. And I sold it for $22.50 because that was her offer. So this is going out to Judy. I hope Judy lives in these all summer long. These are also under a pound, so they are going out in just a regular eBay poly mailer. I do have some pretty poly mailers, but I don't use them very often. Um, I feel like I only will use them for like Mercari because for eBay, I'm gonna use these ones that I get for free, obviously for Poshmark. I use all free USPS shipping supplies since, you know, you can ship with almost any kind of USPS shipping service and um, they have so many great free shipping supplies. It's really just on like Mercari, Depop, um, my website that I would use kind of more like pretty poly mailers. Uh, but you know, as long as it gets there, that's what's important. So this is going to Judy. I got one more. This just sold like maybe a few hours ago. Um, this is a maxi dress by Talbots and it's got this really fun like four leaf clover design on it. If you can see that, um, that print. And then it does have like a little keyhole at the um, neck and a drawstring waist. So I love a good maxi dress. Talbots, if you guys didn't know, is one of my very favorite bread and butter brands. So I was happy to see this sell. And it sold for $29.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. They accepted. This, I'm almost positive, is over a pound. Oh, maybe not. It's right at 15.9. So once, so this is why it's kind of important to get your weight with all of your shipping supplies because, you know, a bag is gonna add weight. A thank you card is going to add weight, so we're just going to see if this stays under a pound, even with all of my shipping supplies. Okay, so here we go. Nope, we're over. So, the next thing I'm going to check is, where is this going? This is going to Massachusetts, so we're just going to go ahead and do a padded flat rate. That's probably going to be the cheapest way to do it. Um, so let me put this guy away. If it were going to somewhere else in Illinois, which is the state that I live in, or if it were going to like Indiana or Missouri, something like that, something really close by, priority mail still might actually be a little bit cheaper than even padded flat rate, even though it's over a pound. But because it's going that far, I'm just gonna assume that the best and cheapest way for me to ship it is padded flat rate. So we're just going to go with that. And that's what the buyer paid for as well. They paid for 
yeah, they paid $8.30 for me to ship it out to them using a padded flat rate envelope. So that's exactly what they're going to get. This honestly was a pretty welcome like sales day as far as five sales are concerned. I feel like I haven't had a sales day like that in a while. So I was happy to see it. Um, and hopefully the trend continues as we keep going through April. I don't know about you guys, but it is starting to warm up. It is lovely outside. My kids and I are going to the park every single day. Um, and I am here for the summer. I cannot wait. I can't believe this school year is almost over though. So this is going to Kim. So now that I have all these weights in, I'm gonna go ahead and pay. Sorry, I keep shaking the table. I'm gonna go ahead and pay for these labels, get them printed, slap them on the packages, and then we'll be on our merry way. Print labels.